Yes, how you doing, sweetie? We'll get to you in just a minute. Forgive me. I, I hope I can do this properly. Um, this after or this morning, I I got a phone call uh, from uh, a, a dispatch from the Cedar City Police Department that uh, one of their officers was called out to pick to pick up a baby hawk. And this baby hawk, uh, uh, someone had found it. We don't know who it was that found it. The officer didn't ask enough questions. We don't know exactly where the hawk came from other than it was in the Cedar City area. And we've got a lot of Swainson hawk nests in the Cedar City area. And so the so I get a phone call from dispatch and uh, and I says, yes, I can take it. And then dispatch also sent the officer to the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources Regional Office. And so I get a phone call from the the regional office. Do I have room? Because right now we are so we have so many animals in rescue right now. It's just it's just unbelievable. It's been the, the busiest um, late spring, early summer that we've ever had as far as wildlife rescue is concerned. And they want to make sure that I that I had room for another one. And I says, of course, I've got room for another one. And, and so then they brought the, the little hawk out to my home. And so we've, we've got our new little friend. And uh, I'm trying to make a little bit of room here so I can turn the computer around. Hopefully, um, I'm not knocking stuff over too badly. Let's see what we can do here. So I want you guys to see. This is our, our new, new little hawk that we have um, just gotten in and it's being hand fed uh, for the first day or two. Can everybody see our little our little friend right there? Here we go. Now this at, at this age and this is what we try to tell people get people to understand uh, at this age um, they outgrow the nest. This is about as big as it'll get even though it's about six weeks old, it's as big as it'll ever get. It can't fly yet. It'll be a little while before it can. It can walk, but that's about it. Baby birds outgrow their nest. This is normal. They end up on the ground before they can fly. This is perfectly normal. And if they're not in a life-threatening situation, um, we encourage people, please leave them and, and let mom and dad continue to do their job. Now, I have no idea where this one came from, so there's no way to get this back to mom and dad. Otherwise, I would have run out uh, this afternoon and got this little one back to mom and dad as quickly as I possibly could uh, so that mom and dad can continue. Even though it was on the side of the road, we could have put it on the other side of the, I assume, a fence or the other side of the tree line or somewhere close enough uh, so that mom and dad could have continued to care for this baby. Uh, but we don't have that option. So this is another rescue that we've got. And this is the exact same hawk. This is a female Swainson's, just like the one that was hit by a car and passed away. And, and uh, this one, we will finish get, getting her raised up and get, get her flying. But we got to get her in the wild uh, by the first part of September because in September, in September is when they start their migration heading for, for Central America. And I have brought with me, because I don't know if this is going to work or not. She did take food for me earlier today. And so we'll see if we can get her to eat a little bit from us. And I don't know if she will or not. Like I said, she's completely wild, but we'll see what we can do. Hi, sweetie. Shall we see if you'll eat a little bit from me? Here we go. You want some? There you go. There's my girl. Yes. Now, a lot of people will ask me, you know, I'm hand feeding it and doesn't that imprint them on humans and isn't that a bad thing? Well, here's the the hope is that we only give them, there we go, we're only going to feed it today just to make sure that it gets plenty to start with. Um, hopefully by tomorrow, um, it will be, it, it should be old enough to, to take its own food. And so in the process of doing that, uh, from now on, it'll be out in the chamber, and it will not see me provide food for it anymore. We want to give it as little to no human contact as possible, which is extremely important, uh, so that it doesn't acclimate 
uh, an imprint on humans. And so, so this is a rare occasion for you to kind of see this, this lovely little Swainson's hawk um, being fed in captivity because, like I said, that doesn't, this doesn't happen very much or for, for a very long period of time. We want these guys not to be acclimated to humans. A little one. Yes, we don't want that. There you go. And so just an extra special treat for all of you is to see this beautiful little Swainson's hawk that we're working on here. And I'm hoping that this is this is the last meal that it, that we, it will be fed by a human being, and uh, that it will be able to give it food. Yeah, you had a pretty big meal earlier, so you're not terribly hungry. Maybe we could mention why you do not name rehab birds. Why I do not name rehab birds. Absolutely. Yeah, you've had enough. Okay, there's my baby. The reason we don't name rehab birds is because we don't... Well, first of all, I rescue... I've rescued thousands and thousands and thousands of animals in my lifetime over the last 50 years. And I certainly wouldn't have enough names, period. But also, we don't name them because th these are not to be acclimated to humans. And so I, I don't want to have that human interaction. I don't want I, I don't want to feel um, emotionally attached to the animal, because the goal is that this animal be completely wild, goes back to the wild, stays as far away from humans as is as possible. So it, that's that's the important thing. And and so we so the the my personal animals, you know, Bud, you know, Bell. Helen, the the personal Cody, our our silly poodle, you know, though I I can we can give them names. Um, we we can feel a friendship and a love and a companionship with them, but this Swainson's hawk, we don't want to do that. That's that's incredibly inappropriate. We want this Swainson's hawk to be wild, and so and so we the we just don't name them, and that's very important. Hi, baby. Hey, we're just a few minutes away from seven o'clock. We have one question from Lori. She asks, how will the little hawk learn how to hunt for food without mom and dad hawk in its life to show it hunting skills? Well, and, and see, that's, that's kind of a misnomer that people have. They really don't get a lot of education from mom and dad. Um, the Swainson's hawk's a great example. The Swainson's hawk, when they, when they start flying around, they follow mom and dad. If mom and dad fly down and catch, you know, a little gopher or mouse or something, these baby Swainson's hawks are so belligerent to their parents that basically they see mom and dad catch something. They'll fly down not to not to observe how to catch something, but to steal food from mom and dad. And um, and they get extremely aggressive to mom and dad. They they abuse their parents horribly. They're flying around screaming like little monsters. And what generally happens is that um, the the babies get so obnoxious to their mom and dad that the mom and dad will start migrating first. And so mom and dad say, to heck with this. I'm sick and tired of these babies beating us up, stealing our food. And mom and dad migrate, leaving the babies completely abandoned. Um and it's a, it truly is a sink or swim. Um, e either they survive or they don't. This is why 80% of all birds of prey don't survive the first year. And then what's really fascinating is mom and dad migrate out. And then, you know, two weeks, a month later, the babies migrate out. And they migrate out alone with no instructions no no information on where they're supposed to go for their migration and somehow they're hardwired in their brains to be able to go on this massive <laughs> hey Cindy, you jump out of your house. Yes, my girl. 
they 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 understand and it's hardwired into their brains it is not a learned thing that they they head for central america and they spend the winter down there and then at the appropriate time they head north and they will fly back without any instructions without any guidance from anyone else uh, they will generally fly back to where they learned to fly in the first place. And and then after a couple of three years, when they're old enough to breed, then they seek out a, a, a breeding territory that nobody else has claimed. And, and so there isn't a lot of education involved. Um, you know, th this, this little one will be put out in a flight chamber. This little one will be able to fly around, get some exercise, and it, it will get, you know, live food. Um, so that it knows, you know, what the appropriate food is, and then the and then the only thing left to do is give it this give it its opportunity the same opportunity that that all the other Swainson's talks have. And I know that sounds rough, but that's that's the way the the process works. Come on in. We're going to uh, feed our little Swainson's hawk. Uh, some chopped up mice. So we need to close the door. Yeah. Hi, little one. Hi, baby. Look what I've got for you. Yeah. You're still being very wild. That's good. But I do need to get you to eat you, eat by yourself. Yeah. Okay. He is. We're hoping to have him feed you all by himself here. You see, there's nothing there. It's right there in your feet. Yeah, you're a sweetie. There you go. Once she's uh, feeding her all by herself, without any encouragement from me, uh, then she won't get any more human contact, and and uh, will uh, be on her own until she's there. You go until she's uh, ready to be released. So we don't want to imprint them, even though it's a little old for imprinting, but we want as little human contact as possible with them. That's my little girl. Okay, well, we're right there. I hope this is the last last time I have to feed you. And that you'll just be able to feed yourself completely, all by yourself. That's the goal. Ah, that's the goal. Okay, there's a little Swainson's, our little, little girl.